like no other and we know the joy of the Lord is our strength so as we as I stand here to worship God just reflect on his goodness and his mercy and how has he has been good to us praise the Lord
our strength, strength like no other, reaches to us. And in the fullness of his grace, in the power of his name, that's when he lifts us up. Hallelujah. Something how great is our God.
upon name. He's worthy of all praise. And our heart will sing how great, how great is our God. Hallelujah. He's the great I am. He's the King of King and He's the Lord of Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Last thing I'm going to do is hallelujah. The Lord God Almighty reign. And we know He reign and He will reign and He will reign forever. Oh, hallelujah.
stand to give the morning scripture reading. Um, this morning scripture reading is Luke chapter 7, verses 36 to 50. Luke chapter 7, verse 36 to 50, and I'm reading from the King James Version. If we're able to stand, we'll stand for the reading of God's word. Here begins. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, bought an alabaster box of ointment. And she stood at his feet behind him weeping, and she began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with ointment. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spoke within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who had what manner of a woman this is, that touch of him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed him 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave us most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman, and he said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she have washed my feet with her tears, and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, have not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman have anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. Amen. Praise his name. Amen. His word is blessed, but we're going to honor them this morning by saying, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, and is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Come, let's give God a shout of praise. Come, let's give God a shout of praise. Come, let's give God a shout of praise. Even I'm thanking God that I can be in his house again another Sunday to give him the praise and to give him the glory. I don't take it for granted that um, I'm alive um, because we're living in an era where many people are dying, many people are, are going into hospital. Amen. And, and, and when they went into hospital, they didn't have COVID. Um, but many are dying of COVID, it seems, in the hospital. Amen. And, and considering that visitors is not allowed. Amen. Then where is this COVID in the hospital coming from? It must be from those who are already in there or those who are looking after those that are in there. And so we thank God that we are alive um, and that we can give him the glory and that we can give him the praise. And uh, we thank God that none of our number, amen, that have been coming has um, succumbed to the COVID where 
they are not able to um, be uh, here or in the sense that they are not alive. Amen. And so we give God the glory and we give him the praise. Um, I hear so many stories across the pond in America how so many people are dying. Amen. Uh, in, in, in vast numbers and even with all the election that they've had and they were saying that uh, because the new president doesn't come in until the 20th of January and they were saying something needs to be done now but the outgoing president has said he's not going to do anything now he's just going to leave it as it is and so we ought to give God thanks and, and give him the glory that we amen are safe and we are alive and that some of the, the uh, situations that other people are, are facing that we still have food to eat Amen. Even if you are struggling, there's food here that you can come and, and cook and make food, and there's potatoes and there's tin food that you can have something to eat that you will not be hungry. You know, I've heard in America that where some of them haven't been able to go to work because they've been ill, that they're starving and they don't have the same level of, of state help as you get over here. You know, in America, it's the survival of the fittest. And so we thank God for the blessings, and we should never take for granted the blessings that we get. Amen. And we should pray for those who are also um, less fortunate than us ourselves. Um, the word that I want to bring you today um, is taken from Luke um, chapter 7. And if I was to give a theme, and my theme would be uh, broken. Amen. And it's about this woman who uh, was broken, amen, and sees her opportunity um, to... Um, uh, meet Jesus. Um, um, you've heard the scripture that was read and in, in summary, amen, it's of a story of a, a Pharisee who had invited um, Jesus to his house, amen, and uh, this woman heard uh, that Jesus was going to be there and so decided to um, put in an appearance. And so that is the, um, uh, the, the general background um, to the story. But as you know, I'm a man of detail, amen, so I'm not just going to leave it there, amen, we're going to get into the, the detail. Now, when you look at the, um, um, the text, and we know that the, this woman was not named, there was a number of women in the Bible who had um, anointed Jesus' feet. Mary was one of them, but this woman was not Mary. Amen. This was a woman who wasn't acquainted. When I say acquainted with Jesus, she had heard about Jesus. She had heard his messages, but she was not known to Jesus. She wasn't a friend of Jesus like Mary was. Um, and, you know, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, she wasn't a, a friend in that sense. And, and, the, and the Bible doesn't actually... Uh, mention her name it just says this woman we also know that um, um, from the 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 text and from um, what bible scholars have said that they believe that this happened around the galilee area and um, what happened back in those times was that um, uh, the galileans didn't like the pharisees um, for those of you who don't understand who the Pharisees were, they were teachers of the law who would um, apply it um, right down to the letter of the law, but they did not apply the spirit of the law. In other words, they didn't really care about uh, people. They didn't care. Uh, uh, all they wanted to do was to make money for themselves and live a nice life. And this particular Pharisee, he was living in Galilee, and the Galileans loved Jesus, amen, and, and the Pharisees were down on their list of people that they liked. In fact, they disliked the Pharisees. And so this uh, Pharisee decided that he, he was living in, in, uh, uh, in pleasant splendor, and he decided to invite Jesus to his home. Now, there are some people who will invite you to, them, to their home, not because... Uh, they um, necessarily wanted to invite you to their home, but because you are popular. And so they want to, they feel, well, you know something, if I invite somebody who's popular, amen, to my home, then it will give me a certain amount of credibility because I can say that they are my friend. And so, as I was saying that the, the, the Pharisees, 
Amen in the Galilean area. They weren't liked by uh, they weren't liked by by the majority of people that lived the Galileans, and so he felt that you know something. If I invite Jesus to my house, that will give me some kind of credibility. You know, like sometimes when a politician is trying to to um, to 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 get certain um, ethnic minorities or whatever group on their side, they'll say, "I have a friend who's who's black or Asian or whatever it is to try and you know to." persuade you and so amen here it was that this pharisee was trying to get jesus to his house amen to um to to get some sort of credibility and he had his doubts about jesus because uh, as you know the pharisees uh, didn't like what jesus was preaching yet he invites jesus to his home and so basically when he invites jesus to his home he has a, 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 a motive um, not only is he inviting Jesus because Jesus is popular but he wants to have a good look at him to see if he can find some fault with him and so you know they, they say oh, no. keep your frame and to no. see who this man really was to see what all the fuss was about because the Bible tells us amen that uh, 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 Jesus went about he healed the sick amen and he preached and he, he helped all those who were in need and when you can wrought miracles and when you can do great things mm -hmm. then you will get a following yeah. and so this Pharisee wanted to find out a bit about more about Jesus he didn't uh, uh, see Jesus amen as the son of God he just so viewed Jesus as a prophet and so he wanted to 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 amen get a little, a little close up to him now he was quite a rich man amen and so he invited Jesus to his home and as you read in the text, when, when Jesus began to, when the Pharisee made a comment in his heart and Jesus began to tell him about the etiquette. Now, I can just imagine that um, because this man was, was rich, I can imagine if you went to their home, his home, probably made it, maybe the table was laid out and maybe you had a number of knives and forks on the table. Amen. Maybe there was maybe three or four knives uh, on the table, and, and 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 it was all laid out beautifully, and and maybe there was you know the nice teacups and all all you know the serviettes all laid out correctly. You know, I remember when I was young. Amen. I didn't come from a middle class background, and being an accountant, a lot of accountants come from a, a middle class background, and we. Um, I remember the time when I was the budget officer, and I went with the directors. Uh, I was working for a company called NHBC, and I went to the directors with the directors. And would come down from all over the country and they went to this restaurant to have a meal and when i went there was a posh place and there was all these knives and forks on, on the table and i'd never been to that kind of sitting before you know because i didn't have that kind of background i wasn't used to fine dining and so forth and so when i sat around the table i didn't i didn't know which knife was to use or, or what to start so what i did was uh, i watched everybody first yeah. Amen. To see what they did, because I thought to myself, I don't just seem to be a philistine, and don't and you pick up the wrong knife and so forth. So I just wait. So they say, "Not you're hungry, you know, you can start when they put my food on the table." But I was waiting to see what they were going to do and which knife they were going to use first. And so sometimes when you go to a place where you you're not familiar, and you don't have the background, you sometimes you have to, you know, I didn't want to show myself up that I didn't have the. The right background so what i did was i just observe and see what everybody was doing and then after i see what they do then i just copied what they did and so here this pharisee amen he had everything laid out probably had all of the butter nice and all the kinds of stuff laid out and 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 things because he wanted to make an impression on jesus and so what happened he does all this stuff and everybody he it's only invited guests that he's invited now Remember the Pharisees were, were known for looking down at people and they would consider themselves to be better than, than everybody. But Jesus was the kind of person who, amen, he had time for everybody. And so they're sitting around the table and the Bible says that Jesus is reclining in his seat at the table. Now what happens is a woman walks in. I'm sure the Pharisee must have been saying to himself, where did that woman come from? How dare you come into my house, amen, um, dressed the way that you are? I can just imagine um, him thinking to himself that, you know, something, you ain't supposed to be here. And he wants to say something, 
But because Jesus is there, he don't want to cause no disturbance. You know, sometimes when you, you're out somewhere, like sometimes we as children and we went out with our parents somewhere, and if we were misbehaving, our parents didn't want to actually shout at us to, to, to try and embarrass us in front of the people that they are, but they would give you that kind of look that you, you know that you know you better behave yourself because they didn't want to actually shout because they wanted to impress the host that they were nice and calm and, and so forth but they would give you a kind of look that you would know that you better behave yourself and so here it was that this woman um, starts to come in and and just imagine let's let's bring it into today's kind of setting just imagine amen maybe a, a, a woman walks in here and, and, and maybe she's got some tiny mini skirt and some stilettos and maybe some fishnet stockings and, 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 and so forth. So you see her walking in. And not only you see her walking in, but she comes right up to me while I'm speaking and kneels down by my feet and starts washing my feet. You'll think to yourself, wow, you can just imagine that as she walks through that room, everybody is watching her. And what does she do? She goes right up to Jesus. Now, the Bible tells us that this uh, 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 Pharisee, he said in his heart that if Jesus was a, a prophet, he would know who this woman is. Now, I am sure that the woman must have been dressed in a certain way that they knew the kind of person that she was. And he's now saying to himself in his heart, he's saying, if Jesus was a real prophet, he would knew, know who this woman was. Because... In the day when they referred to a woman as being a sinner, they were more or less referring to a woman as being a prostitute. And so basically what he was saying was that, how could Jesus allow this woman, amen, to come up to him? Now, he would have probably said something to her, and he probably would have turned her away, but because he was trying to impress Jesus and try to pretend that her, uh, you know, he's a nice person when, and he wasn't necessarily a nice person. So he held his peace, but he said it in his heart that if Jesus was a, a prophet, if Jesus was really the person that he says he is, then he would have known who this woman was. And so the Bible says that this, this woman comes in, uh, in, 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 in verse 38, it says, and she stood behind him at his feet weeping. She began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair and kissed them and poured perfume on them. So this woman came in and she, 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 uh, she is crying and, and, and all the tears wets Jesus' feet. And, and, and she uses her hair. She didn't have anything to wipe his feet with. But she uses her hair to, to wipe his feet. And then she, she had an alabaster box of oil, a, a perfume, and she begins to to pour it on his feet and anoint his feet. And so when Simon saw all of that, he thought to himself, Jesus, you claim that you're a prophet, you claim to be this, but you're lying. I wouldn't have allowed a woman like that to come anywhere near me. Okay. And so he's saying to himself, you, know, you call yourself a prophet, what kind of prophet are you? But this woman had come to Jesus because she wanted to be forgiven of her sins. Now, the Pharisees didn't understand that. And that's why I'm trying to, 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 to get you to understand this. That the Pharisees didn't see that this woman was broken. And sometimes we see people and we don't realize that they are broken. Sometimes we see them and we see them acting in a certain way. And we just look at it from our religious uh, uh, point of view. Get away from me. I don't want to have nothing to do with you. And we can't realize that this person is broken on the inside. And Jesus could read people's minds. And he could read what was going on on the inside. And he realized that this woman wanted to be forgiven of her sins. She was sorrowful. And she came down in humility. She didn't come um, uh, uh, boasting up herself. The fact that she came into this uh, 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 meal that she was not invited to, but she saw it as an opportunity to meet Jesus. Because the Bible says that when she heard that Jesus was there, amen, she took this opportunity to go there. Sometimes when you need something from the Lord, amen, you might not have been invited, but you have to seize the opportunity. And she didn't know when she would get another opportunity to meet Jesus. And so she went and seized her opportunity. And so this Pharisee in his heart, 
he was saying to himself that, you know something, Jesus, you know who you say you are. Amen. You you don't have the, the qualifications like you say you are. You you are probably just some sort of street preacher who tries to think more of yourself than you really are because you should have known who this woman is. Jesus knew exactly who this woman had, was, but he had a heart of compassion. And the Pharisees, one of the biggest problems with the Pharisees, they had no compassion. They didn't care about people. They didn't care whether people were suffering. All they cared about was, this is, a, this is the word. And so, if you was hungry, they, they would just say, oh, oh uh, God is going to feed you, but they would not help you. You know, some people who, you, you go to them and you're in real need, and all they will say, oh, I'll pray for you, but they ain't going to do nothing to help you. They could have given you a glass of water, but they're not going to give you a glass of water. All they're going to say to you is, go away and pray. And so, this was the Pharisees who liked to talk it, but they didn't practice it. And so here it was that Jesus, um, the Pharisee was thinking in his heart that Jesus don't know who this woman is. Because he didn't say it out loud. He was thinking it in his heart. But Jesus turned to, to him and called him and said, Simon. Jesus called him by his name. And he, he says to, to, to Simon, he says this. He said, verse 39 says, when the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. So he was saying to himself, some kind of prophet, you claim to be a prophet. And so he, he's thinking to himself, you know something, you know, you, you say you are a prophet, but you don't seem to know who this woman is. And so what kind of prophet that you are. And so here it is, is that uh, this woman comes before Jesus and Jesus now reads what is going on inside, in, 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 inside uh, this uh, Pharisee's heart. And Jesus says to him in verse 40, he says, I have something to say, say to you. And then Jesus goes on to speak to him. Because I can just imagine the Pharisee, this Simon, this Pharisee, he probably um, thinking more highly of himself than he ought to think. He probably think to himself, well, Jesus allowed this woman to come and, and touch him. Maybe he's saying to himself, oh, this peasant preacher, maybe he's calling Jesus all kind of names, saying this street preacher who don't really understand because, you know, the Pharisees were well versed in, in the Mosaic law. And so he's, he's looking down at Jesus and, 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 and probably saying all these kind of things. But Jesus then says to him, Jesus says in verse 41, he says, two men owed money. To a certain money lender, one owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he cancelled the debts of, of both. Now, which of them would love more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt cancelled. And Jesus said, You have judged correctly. Then he turned towards the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house, you did not give me any water for my feet. But she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. Mm -hmm. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. Mm -hmm. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore I tell you, her, her many sins have been forgiven, for she loved much. But he who has been forgiven little, loves little. Jesus began to tell the Pharisees, seeing that you, 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 you're, you're acting like you know everything, he begins to tell him that, listen, according to the custom, when I come, you were supposed to give me water for my feet. You didn't do that. Amen. He goes, you're supposed to kiss me in greeting. You didn't do that. So Jesus begins to tell him that, you know something, you didn't do, you claim to be a Pharisee, you claim to follow everything by the book, but you haven't done things by the book. And he goes, this woman has come in and she has uh, uh, anointed my feet. Amen. She has per a, a perfume on my feet. She has done stuff that you should have done, but you didn't do. And so he says, he sa he, Jesus says to, to him, he goes, listen, in the parable that he gives him, he says, listen, it doesn't matter. You could have a thousand sins and you can have two sins. You still have sin. And so what he's trying to say, yes, this woman may have many sins, and yes, she may have many problems, but you still have sin also. And so Jesus is saying, guess what? Um, when you are forgiven of your sins, he goes, what do you think? He goes, the person who has had many things, 
they're going to love more. They're going to be more grateful. That's why some people, you see, they were the worst sinners out there. And yet when they come to God, they run with, with, with the anointing and they do great stuff. And the ones who had little um, uh, to be forgiven, they do very little. But the ones who was out there, because they have been forgiven much sin, amen, they run with a vigor and with an anointing that you, 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 you'll be surprised. There was, there was a guy years ago called um, uh, uh, Mickey Cruz who used to be in a gang in America. And they used to go around killing people and so forth. And when he became a Christian, amen, he began to take the gospel all over the world because he had that vigor. Because he took the same vigor, amen, that he used in the gangs, amen, to serve the Lord. And so here what Jesus was saying was that you uh, uh, have judged this woman. And she was broken. And yet you judge her. You didn't seem to care. And you didn't seem to care what she's going through. You didn't put yourself in her shoes. And sometimes we, 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 we like to judge people, but we don't put ourselves in their shoes. We don't put ourselves in how are they feeling. We just look at things from the surface. And what Jesus is trying to get us to do is to have a heart of compassion, a heart that looks beyond my faults and sees my needs. And so as children of God, we can't just judge things on the surface. We need to look beyond the surface. This, this woman, amen, she might have committed a lot of sins but she took her anointment and her perfume and she went to Jesus we don't know how much this uh, anointment or, or perfume cost it could have been expensive we don't know but she was prepared to, to sp uh, spend it on Jesus why because she wanted to be forgiven of her sins guess what she didn't want to live like she was living like that anymore she wanted a change of life and she met Jesus and when she met Jesus Jesus said to her your sins are forgiven what I'm trying to say to you today, you might see somebody come through the doors. You don't know why they come. They might be broken. They might have been going through something. And I can tell you this, those who are broken, when they meet Jesus, they love much. Why? Because he has delivered them from much. And so we have to look beyond what we see on the surface, look beyond just saying, well, oh, you did this or you did that, or you didn't come into in the church looking right. Well, they might have some problems that you can't see. And so this woman came in broken, and Jesus did not judge her based on how she looked. But he met her there, and he says, woman, your sins are forgiven. She came in crying, and she was weeping at his feet, and Jesus could read her heart. And one of the problems that we have today is that we can't read the heart. That's why the Bible said men look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And so sometimes we're looking at the outward appearance. Sometimes when we see a person dressed in a certain way, it's, it's because there's something going on on the inside. Sometimes it's a cry for help because they know that when they're dressed in that certain way, somebody is going to notice them and somebody's going to say something to them. And so it's a cry for help. And it's always good sometimes to find out and say to the person, oh, you know, why do you do that? What makes you tick? Why, why do you do the things that you do? And you begin to peel back the layers and you begin to find out what is going on. Sometimes people, rather than saying, I need help, they behave in such a way and you think that, oh, why are you behaving like that? But uh, deep down they need help, but they don't want to say that they need help. And so their behavior, amen, is, is erratic. But the real problem is that they need help and they don't want to ask for help. Some people were taught that if you, if you ask for help, that's being weak. And so they don't ask for help. And even when they're struggling, they tell you, I'm all right, I'm all right. But sometimes we just have to be honest before God. This woman came. She went to a feast in which she was not invited. It was outside of her comfort zone. It was among people she uh, despised. In other words, the Pharisees didn't like her and she didn't like them. But guess what? Jesus was there. Do you know you can go into a place and you don't have to like the people as long as Jesus is there. And so this woman went in there. She knew that she was going to be ridiculed. She ran the risk that somebody could have grabbed her and threw her out. But she knew as long as Jesus was there, something would happen. 
and she knew that her need would be met. It was her Sabbath when she managed to make contact with Jesus and she was not going to miss out. She wasn't going to allow anybody, a Pharisees or their fine dining to stop her from meeting Jesus. And she walked straight through that room and headed straight to Jesus. And the Bible said she stood behind him. When you stand behind somebody, it's, it's a sign of humility. In certain cultures, they have people walking behind them, in which is a sign of humility. And so she stood behind Jesus and she washed his feet. And Jesus realized and recognized that this woman wanted her sins to be forgiven. Sometimes people, they look at you and because you've done many things, nobody gives you the respect that you need. But she knew that if I have an encounter with Jesus, everything is going to change. Stand to your feet. If we want Jesus to come into our lives, if we want Jesus to make a difference, it takes a certain amount of brokenness. This woman was broken. She came, amen, to meet Jesus. Amen. She was a, a, a woman who they said had many sins. Some referred to her as being a prostitute. Um, many referred to her in derogatory terms. And that's why they said, that the Pharisee said in his heart, how dare Jesus, who calls himself a prophet, how dare you allow this woman to touch you? Because based on the, 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 the Pharisees and, and their Mosaic law, amen, if somebody unclean touched you, then you became unclean. And so, as far as he was concerned, if Jesus allowed this woman to touch him, he was unclean. But Jesus looked beyond her fault and saw her need. That's one thing about the Jesus that we see. When men will judge you, when men will write you off, when men will say, I'm not bothering with you no more, I don't have nothing to do with you no more, Jesus will say, come unto me all he that are heavy laden and I will give you rest. If you're heavy laden today, Jesus can give you rest. He's not going to turn your way. He's not going to look at you and say, well, you didn't look the right way. He's not going to look at you and say, well, oh, um, uh, uh, you have too many sins. I only let people who have ten sins or less. He don't look at you that way. Because he says, guess what? The one who has more sins, who are forgiven of more sins, is going to love me more. And so, because they have been forgiven much. And so some of us, we might not be doing some of the big sins, but do we love God a lot or do we love him a little? Because God is looking at how much we love him, how much we, we spend uh, before him, how much time we spend before him, how much time we, we spend thinking about him and worshipping him and giving him the glory. This woman brought an alabaster box with anointment in it. Before we pray, I want to ask you, what did you bring into God's house today? God expects us to bring our alabaster box of praises, of hallelujah, of worship, of thanksgiving. What did we bring in our box today? This woman did not just bring it, but guess what? She poured it out. And so when we come into God's house, if in our other box, our box there's thanksgiving and there's praises, then when we come into God's house, we ought to pour it out. We ought to open up our mouths and give him thanks and, and give him praises. If you brought something in your alabaster box today, open your mouth and give him thanks and give him praises and say hallelujah because you have brought something and you don't want to take it back home with you. You want to pour it out and leave it in the house of God. Amen. Because you're sending up your praises and you're sending up your glory to God. God because he's the king of kings and the lord of lord this woman brought her box with anointment and she didn't take it back home with her amen she poured it out god is expecting us when we come into his house to pour out everything that we have she poured out her sin and was forgiven of her sin she poured out what have you got in your alabaster jar let us pray 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you another time. We come to give you the glory. We come to give you the praise. We come to honor you. We come to worship you because you're worthy of all praise and you're worthy of all glory. You're worthy of all honor. I pray, God, that we will not have a Pharisee spirit. A spirit that didn't look at what the woman was going through, but just looked at her appearance and made a judgment. God, Lord, a, a Pharisee spirit that even judge you, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, to say, what kind of man is this that is allowing this woman, this unclean woman, to touch him? But God, you realize that this woman was troubled. You realize that this woman was broken. Lord, many times life has broken us. Many times the things that we experience have left us broken. Lord, and when we come into your house to see you, the last thing we want is other people preventing us from reaching you, uh, preventing us from touching you, preventing us from making a connection with you. Lord, everybody who comes in your house, they should come because they want to connect with you. And so I pray in the name of Jesus, regardless of how we come, Lord, you told us to come as we are. Lord, and I pray, God, that when we come in, uh, in your house, this woman, when she walked through, she didn't look at anybody else. She just focused on you and walked right up to you. Help us, oh God, that when we come into your house, we will just focus on you. God, we will just look and say, I have come to hear a word from the Lord. I have come to make a connection with him, with the King of Kings, with the Lord of Lords. And I will not be distracted by anything else because my focus is going to be on you. I pray, God, for those who are sick. I pray, Lord, that you will touch them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. God, we know that you are a healer and you can heal us and we believe it because you said, call the elders of the church and pray the prayer for the sick. And so we pray for the sick right now that you'll touch them and heal them in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for the work that we are doing, Lord, and the obstacles that is coming our way, God, but we know that nothing is too hard for you. you there's someone that said, have you any rivers that seem uncrossable? Have you any mountains you can't tunnel through? My God specializes in things that seem impossible and you can do what no other one can do. Lord, and we have been depending on you so far. God, and we know that whatever you started, Lord, you can see it through. And so we are depending on you to see us through. And we give you the glory and we give you the praise. And we thank you. And we thank you for what you have done. We thank you that we are alive. We thank you that we can praise you. God, we come to pour out everything that we have today. Lord, to give you the praises and to give you the glory and to give you the honor. We thank you that we are in our right mind. Many people are not in their right minds. But we thank you, God, that we have all our faculties, that we can reason and we can understand. We don't take it for granted. We give you the praise and we give you the glory and we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. And God, we pray for this church, Lord. I pray for the government. Lord God, they are making laws, Lord, which comes against the church. But we come against every plan of the enemy to stop your people coming into your house and giving you the glory. Because the main purpose of your house is to give you glory. But they want to open your house to do everything else other than to lift up your name and to give you the glory. We know these are our uh, principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. But we come into your house, Lord, to give you the praise and to give you the glory. And we will continue to come into your house and give you the praise and give you the glory. And we thank you today as we tell you thanks in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.